The following program is brought to you by Element 14, the electronic design community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com. Welcome back to Element 14 Presents. I'm Clem and today is a very special day because for the first time we have an actual star guest. He's famous from many movies, but most certainly for Terminator 2 Judgment Day, one of my most favorite movies ever. So please welcome the Atari Portfolio. It was the world's smallest full functional laptop computer. It's a 16-bit DOS machine, and it was famously used in Terminator 2 to hack an ATM. Without this device, Connor may have been dead and the world would be doomed now. Today's task is to recreate a device that is just like the Atari portfolio, but is more up to date for 2019. Amazing hacks. Inspired designs. Each week, Element 14 Presents brings you innovative projects using electronics, engineering and more. The Atari Portfolio is a fully-fledged 16-bit DOS machine. It has a great little keyboard that really feels good for typing. Entire books have been written on such a device. It has a very, very bad LCD display that only displays monochrome and mostly does just text. So this isn't certainly not an up-to-date device, but I love it for its features, its compactness and the fact that it's a real standard computer. So I want to build a new device that has all the great features of the Atari portfolio, but in a new style for 2018. The Atari portfolio was famous for its long battery life. So for the base of the project, we need a single board computer that has the computational power for modern tasks, but it's also very efficient in power consumption. And the perfect choice for this one is the Beagleblown Black Wireless. Of course, our project needs a display, and I have chosen a 4.3 inch touch display cape, specially made for the Beaglebone Black, and you can get this one exclusively at element14.com. This works out of the box with the Beaglebone Black and the Beaglebone Black Wireless. You just have to download the pre-compiled image on the website and install it on your device. Of course, we need a sufficient power source for the project, so I've chosen the Adafruit PowerBoost 1000 and a LiPo cell with 3000 milliamp hours. So that should be plenty enough. I have salvaged this LiPo cell from an RC battery pack. One cell blew up, another one was okay. Always make sure you're very sensitive with these LCD panels because the connectors can get broken very easily. The big one is for the display itself and the small one on the other side is for the touch panels. Of course our project needs an operating system, so let's head on over to element14.com and download the pre-compiled image that works with the display cape. After downloading the image, I have used a tool named Etcher to burn it onto an SD card, put that into the Beaglebone Black and boot from there. And now we have to install some tools we need to make this into a usable touchscreen computer. Because our device doesn't have a physical keyboard, we need a virtual keyboard. And an app that does this really well is Florence. So let's open a terminal and type in sudo apt-get install Florence. Of course I'm also installing all the applications I want to use. So I use Vim as my word processor, you could also use Nano, both are very power efficient. I'm installing Chromium or Firefox as my web browser and some other gadgets like the Arduino IDE if I want to program something on the go. When everything is installed, I will connect the cape to the Beaglebone Black Wireless, connect the screen and boot it up. Test out all the things that we have installed, if they are working properly, and then we'll start with the physical build of the project. I want to make this unit as compact as possible. I do not want to exceed the original size of the Atari portfolio, so it's completely transportable in my pocket. I want to sandwich everything together and use 
room and spaces that are there for additional parts, but I have to leave room to dissipate the heat of the processor. When you have to deal with heat, there is active cooling and passive cooling. I do not want to run a noisy fan in that unit. I want to make it silent like the Atari portfolio always was. So I'm going for passive cooling. This means I need a little bit more room inside the device and enough vent holes. To slim down the unit, I will remove everything that is not necessary. For example, this switch is not needed as a switch. I can just replace it with a solder bridge and I can also remove these connector headers. I'm using a little slide switch to control the enable line of the PowerBoost 1000 module. So this lets me switch on and off my device and all the other lines get connected to the BeagleBone Black Wireless. The screen gets flipped by 180 degrees and the battery gets sandwiched between the screen and the BeagleBone Black. Charging module is sandwiched between the screen cape and the BeagleBone Black, so that's also pretty compact. But in the case design I have to incorporate a little notch so I have access to the USB ports and the SD card slot. That notch may actually be pretty handy to protect all the connectors of my build. So I have soldered up all the parts. I call this the beagle bone witch because it's like a sandwich. You can actually power a beagle bone black directly from a single lipo cell. There is a dedicated header for this purpose on the board and it also provides onboard power regulation and onboard charging. So you can connect your lipo cell directly to the beagle bone black without any additional circuitry and charge it over the USB plug. Element 14 community member Shabez did a great post on how to use this functionality, but there's a catch to it. If you power your BeagleBone Black that way, you cannot power the USB port. So your USB port would be without function. So I had to use the PowerBoost 1000 and power it over the barrel jack. A link to the tutorial by Shabez is provided in the Element 14 community directly under this video. So we have converted the parts into a very compact design and now we have to design the case around it. The design of the case was done in several steps. First I printed a very raw design out in PETG which is flexible so if it doesn't quite fit I can squeeze it in and know how much I would have to adapt it. Then I switched over to PLA to make over and over iterations of the design. PLA is very cheap so you can print a lot with it. And then I decided to print the final design in ABS so I could vapor smooth it. To make the BeagleBone portfolio look like its original I've used a grey ABS that is similar in color to the original and I also recreated the diesel of the Atari portfolio just to say BeagleBone portfolio and I've stuck it on there with some PVA glue. It's time to try out the BeagleBone portfolio but unfortunately I can't recreate the scene the Atari portfolio was shown in Terminator 2 because if somebody sees me with that thing near an ATM and doing some kind of stuff and filming myself I may get arrested. So let's try it out and let's show some features. So the Atari portfolio and the BeagleBone portfolio are actually pretty similar in size. They have about the same thickness to them and the overall shape is in the general ballpark. And the screen of the original Atari portfolio is very bad to read. It's just monochrome. It boots up within one or two seconds and it also shuts down. But it's in reality just a hibernation mode. While the BeagleBone portfolio really boots up and shuts down in about one and a half minutes. The original has a clicky keyboard and the new version has this virtual keyboard. You have a lot of apps, programs that you know from Debian Linux on there. 
you can install any program that runs on the BeagleBone and charge it over USB, just like your smartphone. It fits perfectly in the hand. This notch is actually pretty comfortable to hold it. You can attach a USB device and it doesn't obstruct you while using the BeagleBone portfolio. Because the BeagleBone portfolio is so compact, you can easily fit it in your pocket, just like the original. It has the general size of a standard smartphone. And of course you can use an external keyboard for convenience. So the BeagleBone portfolio does everything the Atari portfolio did back in the day. You can take notes, you can do calculus, you can do organizing stuff, you can keep track of your calendar, all those PDA functions that you might want to use, but you can also surf the internet and do anything that you could do with a normal computer, but just in a small form factor and the touchscreen might limit you in some way. But it's actually more useful for me than doing it on a smartphone because I can run all my native usual Linux apps. So the BeagleBone portfolio is like a spiritual success of the Atari portfolio. What would you do with such a handy little computer? Is there any device you would like to recreate to today's standards? Have you ever thought about old tech that could be useful today? Let us know on the Element 14 community. I gotta go, there's another project waiting for me, but I'll be back. Or if that doesn't work, just go up to some random stranger and say, I need your clothes, your boots and your motorcycle and the beetle bone black. Mm -hmm.